that is a false narrative that all religions are basically the same and that's just false on the face of it they absolutely are not christianity claims to be the only true religion jesus as the only true way to god all others are false that muddled up narrative like well people are just trying to find their way to god and we all end up in the same place anyway and all religions are basically the same that's very misguided but absolutely false Welcome back to the WSBC Podcast. My name is Daniel Lewis. I'm the host of the podcast, as well as the worship leader at Wicola Springs Baptist Church. We're joined today, as always, by our pastor, Dr. Randy Creel. We're going to go ahead and ask some questions today pertaining to, to Sunday's message, as well as give some prayer requests and our ending suggestion. This week's prayer request, we're, we're lifting up the area around us our local mission field that everybody who is a Christian is called to be a part of. Anywhere you are, we're called to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. So that's our mission as Christians, and that's what we should, we should be striving to do every day. This area around here is growing. There's more people, and there's more people to reach. So, Pastor, how can we lift this up? How can we pray for this as the area around us is growing, and how can we pray for our brothers and sisters to step up and be part of the mission? Wherever you are, God has put you there for a reason. So we're in Crawfordville, Florida. Someone else is in a different community, different location. Obviously, we want to have a burden to reach the people who are, who are right in our own community. Our particular community is is a bedroom community to Tallahassee, Florida. And and it is exploding in growth. Everywhere you see there are houses going up, hundreds of houses it seems. And and I think literally hundreds are going up and there's a new neighborhood it, almost I see one just continually it seems like. <clears throat> so our area is growing. And some people I mean that brings some negatives, more traffic more hassle, more people in Walmart. <laughs> so there's some negatives to the community really exploding and growing. Um, and is the community prepared for the growth as far as extra cars on the roads and infrastructure and all those things? But our concern is, okay, we've got all these people that are coming into our community or will be soon. How do we seek to reach them with the gospel? And so I think we need to be praying for our church and the other churches in our community, the other churches that preach the gospel and teach God's word, to be ready, to have compassion, to have a desire to reach these people for Christ. And and we need to pray for wisdom that God would would help us to know how we can engage them, how we can connect with them, and how we can find meaningful opportunities to present the gospel to them. And then that's true, whatever your community is, whether it's growing or not growing. We're looking for, for avenues to, to build relationships, to, to, um, to minister to people. Seeking them out. Yes. And, and providing connecting points with our church and one of the things that we've done in the past few months to do that is um, really seek to upgrade our children's ministry. And we've done that. Our children's minister is doing a great job with that. And we've made an investment there because we know that many of these people coming to our community will be families with children. And they're going to be interested and want to know what do you do for kids. And that's a method there's no kids ministry that you'll find in the new testament but getting the gospel to people is our mission and so a method that god uses is through children's ministry obviously obviously we are taking the gospel to those children but beyond that 
the the scope is to try to reach their parents as well. Um, and, and what I mean is a lot of the ministries that we have in a church, you won't see reflected in the New Testament, like children's ministry, youth ministry, even some of the more popular ones that we have. Um, their strategies that were developed in the last hundred years or so to try to reach people with the gospel and um, because we want our mission we want to live it out in our mission field so do pray for our community pray for your community wherever you are look for opportunities and avenues to reach people before we get into some of the questions would you mind filling us back in on yesterday's Sunday's message yeah, we were just traveling down the Romans road, basically. It was a salvation message. What does it mean to be a Christian? How does someone become a Christian? What is that, what's that all about? And we just walked through the basics. Um, very simple, basic gospel presentation that we're all sinners. Our sin separates us from God. God loves us. He sent Jesus to die for our sins. He arose from the dead. Then the way in which that's received into our life and applied to us personally is through personal faith in Jesus Christ. And that was the nutshell version of the message. So the question you posed to us uh, was asked on Reddit. Uh, not sure if everybody knows what Reddit is, but it's a social media. It's more anonymous than other places. You don't know the people you're talking with on there. You rarely do. But a, pest, a question was posed on Reddit where it says, when you say I'm a Christian, what do you mean? Now, there's many people who identify as Christian. That's a common word today, identify <laughs> as being a Christian. But they, may, they might actually be confused about what that actually means. So is there a difference between how our culture and the Bible might define being a Christian? Well, yes, obviously. Um, and that's always been true. Um, people have a lot of misconceptions about what it means to be a Christian. Even the word itself, the word Christian is the primary word that's used today to identify people who have believed on Jesus. It was not the primary word that was used in the New Testament. I think it's only used three times in the New Testament, maybe only twice, I'm working off memory here. Um, and it was a derogatory term it was not a compliment these were these christ followers these these people of the way they were called so the the primary term in the book of acts to refer to what we call a christian is the word disciple these people became disciples that meant they became mm -hmm. followers of jesus christ learners after christ and so the culture might define that on a number of different levels and, and the culture in which you live, like we're in the southern United States, southeastern United States, and, and even though it's changing even here, there's still a cultural Christianity that, well, yeah, God, church, the Bible, um, those are all, for some people, positive things. And, and so, sure, I'm a Christian because I'm not a Muslim or a Buddhist or something. I, my grandpa was a Baptist preacher. So, yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian. Um, but that's not really the way in which we would look at that biblically. Biblically, a Christian is a believer, a disciple of Christ, someone who has been convicted by God's Spirit of their sinfulness and come to believe that what Jesus did on the cross is the only hope of their salvation. And they, they turn in repentance from their sins and they turn to Jesus to trust him and depend upon him to save them. And um, that's very different from just some cultural version of Christianity. I think a, a term that I hear non-Christians use more than Christians is when they're talking about religion, Christians being religious. I've known some Christians that try and distance themselves from that word. So maybe what's the difference between religion and Christianity in regards to maybe how modern culture thinks of us? I'm not sure. I mean, there's really 
there there is a difference yes but there's not a difference and so it's one of those kind of trap questions almost um if you look up religion it's a it's a belief system relating to god as a supreme being it's it's also defined as a um um, a faith or a or a way to worship god and and certainly under that broad definition christianity would come under that as a religion like islam or buddhism now i'm not saying we're the same i'm saying broadly defined um in a soci- sociological way um sociological way um yeah christianity is a religion but it, it's very different from those religions. You can pretty much do a dividing line. Christianity is a grace-based uh, religious system, if you want to call it that. Um, those others are works-based. So Christianity focuses on what you do in light of what God has done. The other systems are works based that emphasizes only what you do <clears throat> in order to get God to do something. So I might win God's approval or win salvation or earn salvation by doing these good deeds. That's anathema in true Christianity because we know we could never do that. It's God has done something, He acted, He sent Christ to die for our sins, and now we respond to that. Um, through faith and and that is very different and the, there's the trite saying there's there's a truth behind it but it's become trite christianity is not a religion it's a relationship and i get that it's just been said so much that sure that some of that meaning is lost but the bible uses the word religion on at least one occasion positively it's in the book of james where he says true religion and undefiled before god is this to take care of widows and orphans and to keep yourself unspotted from the world. Sure, and I think when most people, when Christians try to disassociate, it's it's in that regard, thinking right. of like the the Pharisees who followed all the rules, but right. they want to not be like that. They don't want to just follow the rules without having the heart and the relationship with God there. You could probably go too far with that and... sure make religion a bad word. So just wanted to ask that question because there's a lot to that and people might miss, Christians might not misunderstand it, non-Christians might misunderstand it. So there's just some there. But here's one thing that we do need to make clear. That is a false narrative in the world and that is that all religions are basically the same and that's just false on the face of it they absolutely are not yeah. the same christianity is radically different um christianity claims to be the only true religion right jesus as the only true way to god all others are false but even even with that th- that that muddled up narrative like well people are just trying to find their way to god and we all end up in the same place anyway and all religions are basically the same that's um that's very misguided to give it the best spin but absolutely false um not even similar in, yeah in most cases no it, yeah i've heard that many times where yeah we're all just we're all communicating with the same god but we have different ways but that seems so crazy because it's like there's so much leeway there there's so much, you can think the opposite things are true. Right. It's definitely not logical, nor an informed position on, well, what does, what does say, um, Islam teach compared with what does Christianity teach? And they're not the same. And what does Buddhism teach compared? And people who really are adherents to Islam understand that as do people who are adherents of uh, or who are buddhist they understand that they're not saying the same things that that we would be saying about religion about faith um about god it it's people that 
maybe really aren't adherents of any particular group might say it's all the same. Yeah. I have heard, though, people who follow her religion say that, and that's when it really just doesn't compute. It's like you're following this, but you don't believe that this is the only way. Well, but you'd have to question... What's their level of understanding of of what they're following? Sure. Because if they think it's the same as something that is 180 degrees opposite, then how could they actually be following it? And normally where you find that is on the more liberal end of the theological spectrum of pretty much whatever. Hey, whatever. And then um, we're back at following the rules of a religion without yeah you're making it up on your own you've disconnected it from the teachings of that group when i've heard people talk about christians on a podcast or a tv i often hear things like they've got a rule book and it says if you do certain <laughs> things you go to hell if you do other certain things you might go to heaven and then normally follow it up by like this is ridiculous like how could how could a person know that so do you think our eternity, our afterlife, is determined by a rule book? Oh, they, I guess they'd be referring to the Bible in our case, but saying, if you do good things, this happens. If you do bad things, this happens. Well, the last thing you said, if you do good things, basically, by implication from what you said earlier, you would go to heaven. If you do these bad things, you would go to hell. Yeah. Um, that's not at all what New Testament Christianity teaches. N not at all. Um, that's why I said earlier, Christianity is unique and distinctive in that it emphasizes grace so that God did for us what we could not do for ourselves. Um, the book of Romans says that through the law, through keeping the law, no flesh will be justified in God's sight. Because from the law comes the knowledge of sin. So what the law does is it, it does tell us the best way to live life. This is, this is God's standard. But it also, as we seek to do that, we figure out we can't do that perfectly. We fall short of that, which is where we started on Sunday. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And so God acted in grace and he sent Christ to die on the cross for our sins, to do for us what we could not do for ourselves. So it's not about checking boxes. I kept this rule, this rule, this rule. Because later, the New Testament, the book of James says, it says if you break one part of the law, you're guilty of it all. You're, you're a sinner. You're a lawbreaker. And you stand guilty before God. So we're not saved by keeping rules well and when people think that they're going to look at christians and say well i've seen this guy do this i've seen him do that so he's not even following his own thing so a lot of people would look at christians and just think of how hypocritical they are so why is this such a a common thing for people to think of our rule book well, let's back up a step and say, okay, we have the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of rules in the Bible, but I wouldn't just say it's a rule book. Um, but what is the Bible? So the Bible is a written revelation of God. So God moved in the hearts of men to write down these truths and these words of Scripture. So this is, this is God's book in that its origin is not with man, but with God. That's clearly taught in the scripture. So it's not, it's not merely a rule book, even though it does contain rules. Um, but it's, we're looking to God. We're not, we're not, we're not worshiping the Bible. We're worshiping God, but how do we know about God? It's because God has revealed himself generally in nature, but we can misunderstand that and it doesn't give us all the details, but specifically special revelation in the scripture. And 
So we do look to the scripture. We do believe that it's God's word, that it's truth without any mixture of error. And and so in that sense, we do look to this book for for us to gain an understanding about God because he's revealed himself to us through his word, and we believe that this is truth. And And rules are not bad. Are they? I mean, aren't you glad there's not some, objectively? There's some rules when you drive home today. Yeah. If you've ever been in a country where there really are no rules, you're grateful when you come back to one where there are some rules about how you drive and people follow those rules. We're just saying those rules were never intended to save you because you could never keep them fully. And what those rules do, they do express, this is God's will, this is the way you live life. But we understand we fall short of that and we need redemption. We need a savior. And um, we don't throw off the rules. We seek to live in obedience to the Lord because of what he's done for us. He has saved us. We never seek to become saved by following those rules. And it's a world of difference. So, just to to finish up this section here about where the world thinks of us or Christianity as a whole, what are maybe some some of the most common misconceptions that you've heard about Christian or Christianity in today's culture? I'm not sure I'm an expert on that, (laughs) Um, especially since I am um, intentionally not plugged in to like social media, things like that. I'm aware of them, but I don't participate in them by by choice. Um, I think one you just said was basically here's the rules, and if you keep the rules, you'll go to heaven, you're a good person, and if you don't keep the rules, you'll go to hell, you're a bad person. Um, And we just talked about that misconception. it's probably it's not where you're thinking, um, but I, the one that comes to mind first of all in our current world is this one: um, Christians hate gay people. Hmm. I think I think that's a big that big, is big a one. common theme, and it's a um, it's a common misunderstanding of of what Christians believe. So how would you dispute that? I would dispute that by saying, no, Christians love gay people, um, love them enough like other people trapped in their sins to to point out their sin, not affirm it, point it out and point them to Jesus Christ. So our culture, if you personally disagree with anybody except a Christian, obviously, <laughs> then you're accused of hate or fearing them. All the phobias that people talk about. Sure. Um, as, as believers, we, we, had, we look at Scripture and say, yes, homosexuality is described as a sin in the Bible. I mean, anybody objectively that would read the Scripture would have to come to that conclusion. Objectively. Objectively, keyword. yes. So if you took somebody that didn't know anything about anything, no dog in the hunt, so to speak, and they just read certain parts of the Bible, they would say the Bible condemns homosexuality as a sin. It does a lot of other things too. That's not the only one. But so in pointing that out, we don't point that out because we hate people that are trapped in that bondage. Um, we, We... we're commanded to love all people, take the gospel to all people. So those people that you see on the side of the road on TV at military funerals, holding up signs about how God or Christians hate homosexuals, they're not representatives of true Christianity. No, they're not at all. Um, but that, that doesn't mean we don't stand against that sin. We do, but we present the gospel of hope. If you repent of your sins and trust Jesus Christ, he'll save you. And it doesn't matter what your specific set of sins are. Um, So 
Christians don't hate. We hate the sin of homosexuality like we hate all sin, lying or, or um, <clears throat> adultery, fornication, keep naming it. We, we hate those sins because God hates those sins, but yet God demonstrated his love for us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so that's our message of the cross. And Paul even pointed out to the church at Corinth, he named, he named homosexuality. And he said, in a list of sins, he said, such were some of you, but you've been washed, you've been justified, you've been sanctified. So their lives had been changed by the gospel. So the world defines, well, it's hate if you don't just accept, but that's not true. Um, it, it, it's, it's love. It's demonstrating God's love. That, that's the one that, again, I'm sure that's not what you had in mind, but that's the first one that came to my mind is we're accused of something that's not actually true. No, I think that that's a good one to point out. And I think part of that, obviously, it, it's, it's something that people, like we were saying before, a common word right now is identify. If someone feels that they are gay, that is part of their identity. And so if we are against that, then they feel that we are against who they are entirely. No one, like everyone tells a lie, but no one identifies as a liar. So if you say lying is bad, who's, who's really gonna get on a pedestal and say lying is the best for everyone ever? I mean, people lie all the time. Well, they may not identify it as, but they practice it for sure. <laughs> sure, but but that's a big difference. Because uh, I'll I'll get more defensive about things that maybe identify as a strong word, but things I care about, and so it makes more sense that certain things would be just. I think it's more a, apparent. I think it's a false distinction. Sure. In that, Agreed. In that, I I'm more offended now because I identify as this, and now you've attacked me personally. Well, sin is personal, and and it it's meant to not personally attack that individually, like, not like me, but to point out the way you're living your life is contrary. To God's will and God's way, you're living in sin, and that's going to end in destruction. And and it doesn't matter what sin you're talking about, whether it's lying, whether you identify as it or not. Sure. Um, so that's that's a false narrative that can't keep us from pointing out the truth. And it's not a hobby horse that we want to ride or a pogo stick. We're just jumping them down on all the, the time. That's the only thing we're right against yes then we're not presenting the whole counsel of god but it is something that's in our culture right now very prominent and so the the church has to speak to that as to what does the scripture say and what's the solution and the remedy and the world has gone absolutely morally insane along these lines where people can define their own reality, even against biology, even with people getting banned from social media platforms for stating a biological fact, dealing with X chromosomes and Y chromosomes from middle school biology. We learned basics about that. And now, if you say that, you're, you're a villain. Hmm when you just state what you learned in sixth grade biology. So to, to kind of bring this home and to summarize this, can you, can you give us just a quick takeaway that you want people to have from this passage, from this Sunday's message? Well, we were in multiple passages. The, the takeaway is <clears throat> the intent of the sermon was to lay out how is a person saved 
Why do I need to be saved? What has God done to save me? And what do I do in response to that? So I'm in my sins. We all are, apart from Jesus. God intervened. That's what the cross is all about. But we have to personally receive that. It's not just automatically applied to us. We have to personally receive the Lord Jesus Christ. As many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those that believe on his name. So the thrust of the message was, have you received Christ? It was a personal evaluation time. Have you received Christ? That was the intent behind what we were doing on Sunday for people to evaluate. Do I know Christ or do I have some vague, nebulous, cultural version of Christianity that I'm dependent upon for my salvation? All right, my suggestion this week is for parents, especially parents who have children that are elementary age children. I encourage you, if you've never done so, to check out Adventures in Odyssey. It comes from Focus on the Family. It's really great stories that teach biblical truths, and um, they're very interesting and fascinating for children to listen to. Um, you can find them on um, Focus on the Family's website where you can listen to maybe two or three of them or you can you can download them and buy them or they're on many Christian radio stations if you have one in your area but the, these go way back we use them with our kids listen to them on trips and 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 not just for the kids many of them were very captivating even for me as an adult that they're very well done and um, would be very helpful and beneficial in teaching um, biblical truth in a creative way through stories revolving around the town of Odyssey and Wits End, the soda fountain there, <clears throat> and and really great stories I would recommend to parents, particularly elementary age children.